Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Our topic today is Blow by Blow, I Take Down Babylon, which is America. Now, in this particular one, I have to say a couple of things before I get into it. I believe it's of God. I believe it's very important that America listens to it. I was just a common salesman. Nothing special in the kingdom of God. But God called me to be a watchman. I believe if you're watching right now, God has probably called you to be a watchman from whatever you've done in the past. It may not be a full-time position, but it could be worked in depth. But the main thing is when God calls us to do something, we do it. So primarily, I've been called to spread the warning of Demetri Dudman, specifically that America is the mystery Babylon of Revelation 18 and five of those chapters in the Bible, and that America will be destroyed in one hour. So my job, is to warn, to tell what God is saying, and to win souls. My job, however, is not, <laughs> it's a little hard to say, it's not to build a big ministry, it's not to please people, nor even our supporters. God has tired, tired me, and he can fire me. In other words, I report to him, and if you are truly a watchman, you do too. And I must tell you what I believe, that is of God, uh, at least to those people that will hear. Your job, is to discern what is God and to pass it on. That includes your fasted prayers, gifts, and sharing of God's word and warning. In other words, we all serve the kingdom of God. We all serve Jesus. And the more we can do that, the more one of these days we're going to be very, very blessed. Okay, so I'm not trying to bring this word, trying to impress you or trying to get money. I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to serve God as best as I can possibly do it. Likewise, you must also do, you recall, not every word from God is easy to understand. So my job here today is to try to help you to understand what I believe God has said. Just because I put one word of message from a person on does not, I say does not necessarily mean that all the other publications they put out, past, present, future, are of God. I don't necessarily endorse all of them. Sometimes one is of God and then sometimes the very next one is not, or I'm impressed not to put it on the program. But the things I do put on the program, I believe are of God. And this was one that I think is very important. So I believe this dream is of God. And I'm gonna do my best to try to help you to understand it because it is rather deep and complicated. Okay, Vicky Goforth Parnell, 2523, is called Death Blow and Darkness. He woke me up to these words, blow by blow, I take down your nation, daughter. All heaven rejoices. For such evilness and lewdness she has brought to this world, my world. Soon I shall strike its death blow for all the world to see. Mercy, daughter. Where no mercy is given, then none is received. America is no more, and Babylon is doomed to fall. For it is written before one hour, one completed 60 minutes of a turning of a wheel of time, she falls, and falls hard. Now, based upon other scriptures, which I'm not going to go into right now, I believe that's talking about one seven-year period. In other words, within one seven-year period, she falls. Now, you remember, Dimitri was told, and that's what we have to do, is we have to put this together with other words. Dimitri was told that the fall of America will start with an internal revolution in America started by the communists. And I believe that all of that will take place all in one seven-year period. Time she falls and falls hard, never to be recovered again. Again, I can show you scriptures right out of Revelation 18 where it says that. Time has passed until time is no more. All that is left is the grains that I hold in the palm of my hand and the occurrences of time within time, found inside a wheel of a wheel. Now, you know, Jesus has said a lot of different times, a lot of different ways, that the time is running out, that the time of grace is shortened, or then finally now he started saying that the grace is now stopped. Now judgment is here. He's tried to warn us a lot of different ways. And if you're watching this right now, you're probably a watchman. And if you're a watchman, you're commanded to pass it on. You're commanded to tell people and to warn people. Now, it's not your job to see that they believe. It's not your job to see that they repent and return to Jesus. It's simply your job to see that they know what the word of the Lord is saying. All that is left of the grains of hand I hold in the palm of my hand and the occurrence of the time within time found within inside a wheel of a wheel. Oh, can't you see, daughter of mine, how what it is written will come to pass? And sad to say, 
So many people, even Christians, can't seem to understand what time it is. We'll come to pay, come to because I, the Creator, spoke it. I speak it, and it happens. There are no idle words of my speaking and not really meaning it. I have no jesting in my mouth. Now, I get a lot. By the way, thank you for sending your links to, to other people you think are here. God, I get a lot of them. And I have to discern what is God and what is not. One of the things I pray every day, Lord, give Leslie and I knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom, understanding all visions and dreams, showing of heart sentences, dissolving of doubt. Give us an excellent spirit. Help us conduct ourselves wisely. That's found in Daniel chapter 7. Or is it 2? Anyway. This sounds like God. From all of the 40 years in Bible prophecy, it sounds like this is the way God talks. And you can tell a difference when it's flesh talking and when it's God talking. This is God talking. Will come to come to pass because I, the Creator, spoke it. I speak it, and it happens. There are no, no idle words of my speaking, and not really meaning it. I have no jesting in my mouth, like so many upon your world does, who will utter words, then come back and say, eh, "I didn't really mean those words." The power of creation, of speaking life and death into your world and others, you did so activate when you uttered the words, whether in a jest or in sincerity. This is why I gave knowledge to you inside my holy scriptures of the truth. What you say, what you speak over yourself and over others, this is found in Proverbs 18, 6 and 7 and verse 21. Although originally my holy scriptures were not divided by verses when it was written down by the unctional leading of the Holy Spirit upon men, can't you see the well-placed blows sent by your once great nation? My little daughter, to bring her down, Okay, now let's talk about that a second. Surely, a person can see all of the things going wrong with our nation. And surely they can look and say, that's the hand of God. God is bringing us down. Yet, sad to say, many people can't. And what this is about to say is a lot of the non-Christians see that the end time is arriving even more than the Christians. It should not ought to be that way. But that is the way it is, and I agree with that. Once great nation, my little daughter, to bring her down, greater still, yet many of the chances and opportunities of my extended grace and mercies given to all for a chance. A time to repent of their sins and come to meet their holy God. Like, for example, I recall 2015. There was a lady, see if I can remember her name, Mina. I want to say Gretchen, but that's not it. She was having a lot of prophetic words in 2015. Oh, this is going to happen. And at that time, there were several other people. They had prophetic words. Boy, they sounded like right on. And then all of a sudden, nothing. And a lot of people turned and called them false prophets. Oh, they didn't hear anything. And to tell you the truth, I was a little sorry I put some of them on the program. Then came out the word that the time of grace has been extended. In other words, what they said was from God. It's just that God extended the time of grace. Now, a lot of people say, yeah, well, if, it's, if they say it's supposed to come to pass, well, I understand. I mean, I, I wish it worked more like that sometimes myself. But on the other hand, I'm glad that God is giving us grace. I'm glad that we're, he's giving us a little bit more time. But now, not just one, but several people say the prophecies are now saying... No more extension of time. No more added grace. In other words, now what is being said is going to come to pass. Now, I know a lot of people, when they see this come to pass, and they say, well, finally. <laughs> Matter of fact, I was just talking to the Lord here, I don't know, an hour ago. And I said, Lord, you know, there's a side of me that wants to say, no, 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 don't bring this judgment. But on the other side of me, there's another side that says, bring it on. Is not time as pastime. And I think that we shouldn't want these bad things to come. But when they come, we need to be prepared. And yeah, that's spiritually, but that's also physically. Because we don't want to be one of those that are not prepared. We want to be prepared so we can be a blessing and, and help to other people that didn't know. You know. Now let's go on. 
My extended grace and mercy is given to all for a chance, a time to repent of their sins and come to me, their holy God. There had been a point in time that if true repentance of heart had been found in some, enough to turn your whole nation round to me again, that I would have allowed your nation to flourish and grow a little longer before her downfall came fully into existence. I'm telling you, that's God. But this time is found no more. In other words, there's not going to be any more extended time of grace. I warned your nation to repent, to turn to me as a whole people, and to get their houses and lives in order with me, my holy word. Now, here's what they're going to say. If you approach them with this, they're going to say, well, I, or, or when it hits, they'll say, oh, well, you know, God didn't tell me it was coming. No, because you have too much sin. He doesn't report. He doesn't speak to people that aren't close enough to him. He only speaks to those that are very, very close to him, following all of his laws. And I might add, there are very few. Probably, I'm going to guess, in the entire world, there's like 10, maybe 10, that God speaks to like this. He is speaking. The problem is they aren't listening, and I know what they're going to say. Okay, so some catastrophe takes them out, and when they wind up in front of Jesus and his judgment day, they're going to say, well, you didn't tell me this was coming. I think Jesus is going to say, you see that group right over there? Those were the watchmen. I was telling them this was coming, and if you'd have wanted to know, I'd have seen to it that you got the message. You didn't want to know. But see, as a watchman, if you are watching right now, it is your responsibility to see that they know the word of the Lord. Because we don't want to be that group of people that says, okay, group over here, you people were supposed to warn this guy. You were supposed to warn this group. You didn't warn them. Instead, you were afraid. You were afraid they wouldn't like you. Enough said. We'll move on. I think I made my point. I did so out of my love and compassion, for great is my tender love for you, but this time is found no more. It has expired. Now the time of weeping and wailing begins as your world and nation enters more into the days of tribulation, of testing, of trying, of purging, that has come upon your world. A time of scoffing is upon my world, and it is even by my very own, by those who profess and know me, Jesus as their Savior. We are not in the end time of days of the book of Revelation, I hear them say, to laugh secretly to one another upon their electrical devices, your electronics, or as you gather together before entering into your worship, my churches across the world, they say, we're not in the last days. Eh, we don't have to worry. Why do they say that? I don't think that they say that because they don't know. I think that they're saying that because we're not in the last days, because if it had been the last days, we'd have gone in a rapture. And he speaks about that too. I think that's strange because Vicky Goforth Parnell believes in a pre-trib rapture. So if God was saying there was going to be a pre-trib rapture to protect people so that they wouldn't have to go in through any trouble, for sure he would have spoken through her, right? But he hasn't. As a matter of fact, the ones that I believe are hearing from God, he hadn't spoken it to any of them. And several believe in a preacher of rapture. God's still speaking to them anyway, <laughs> but they misunderstand. Anyway, let's go on. Flat out denial, as your world calls it, little daughter, even though many have listened, read or listened to my holy word, scriptures of truth. Why is it that the ungodly, the unsaved heathen, believes these truths that my children do not? I'll tell you why. Because your children, Jesus, believe there is a preacher of rapture. They misunderstand. They believe what they want to believe, not necessarily what the scriptures say. Consequently, we don't have to worry about all this because we're going to go in the rapture first. So we can't be in the end times because the first thing that's going to happen is the rapture. And it's going to be a real slap in the face when all of a sudden they wake up and they say, you know what? The rapture should already happened. It hasn't happened. So obviously, Jesus lied to us and they're going to walk away from the church. Michael Baldea says, if they only beat the pastors and only burn the churches, they got off light. <laughs> In other words, if you're believing that pre-trib rapture, you are responsible to find the truth. Now, I've written a book on it. Um, you can go to prophecyclub.com. I've got several of the books there. One you want there talking about the rapture is how pre-trib one. Three words, 
how pre-trib won. And it'll go in and explain all of this about the rapture. Anyway, let's go on. Why is it then that the ungodly, the unsaved heathen, believes these truths, but my children do not? Why is it that the unsaved can see what's happening and coming, yet my children, many do not? The answer is, they've been taught a pre-trib rapture. It is because you have purposed inside your hearts and denied the very physical and spiritual evidence that I've given to your world. You take your own interpretation of my holy scriptures and run with it, as if it is some sort of divine revelation from me, from my heaven. You won't even get down upon your knees or your faces before me, your holy God and King, and seek me for my truth. The scriptures are me. I am the Word. I am the living and written Word. You do not know their meaning better than me. My Spirit, my Holy Spirit, is the teacher. I have given to you, even when a teacher teaches, it is up to the pupil to receive what is being taught. You are deceived. You have allowed Satan, your enemy, to deceive you with your eyes, and now you're all but spiritually blind. As you go about your everyday life, waiting for the events to happen in the way you interpret or you understand them to be. Pay very close attention to my words, little children. I do not conform. See, this is God. Okay, this is the way God sounds. Okay, and, 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 you know, I've been around a lot of this stuff for 40 years. This is the way God sounds. The God I know, he talks like this. And he rebukes just like this. This is a rebuke. And by the way, those that love the Lord love his correction. Revelation says, those that I love, I chasten. I do not conform my word, myself, to your thoughts, your interpretation of my written and spoken holy scriptures. I am absolute truth, and there is no changing this. I am forever settled, firmly established in heaven, for I am the written holy word, once dead, but now fully alive. The grand illusion, the greatest of them all, as my very own children sit upon their easy chairs, waiting before their expected signs to come, or what we say is waiting for their, the rapture to come, waiting for their expected signs to come forth, because this just has to be this way. The, the rapture just has to take us first. That's what he's saying. He didn't say it that way. He wants us to figure it out. It is because you have studied Scripture all of your lives. I say to you now, you are wrong. Now, he doesn't say it's the rapture, but I'm saying it's the rapture. He's saying, you rapture believers... You guys that think Jesus is going to come in the air and suck you out of yours so you don't have to go through any testing, you're wrong. You need to wake up and you need to get you need to get some understanding before you lose your salvation because you got mad at God because he didn't rapture you out and you're in some trouble. I say to you now, you're wrong. Reach up and take off the rose-colored glasses of complacency and take a good hard look at the state of your world. Chaos rules. Sin abounds. Antichrist rises. What he's saying is <laughs> that if there were a pre-trib rapture, it would have already happened. My proof is all around. You were in the end of times, the great day, the time of my wrath, foretold by Joel, Isaiah, John, Daniel, and others of my prophets of old. They are here. I'm drying up the Euphrates River in preparation for the coming battle at the end. I made a whole program showing you that the Euphrates River, strangely, even though it's got a big dam, it's still drying up. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's so the kings of the east might be prepared, Revelation. For those who have been observing and watching this intently for yourselves will have noticed an increase in the speed of the great river's disappearance or drying up. I cannot lie. My scriptures cannot lie, because I am truth. The living truth itself. If you don't remove your rose-colored glasses, or I'll say it this way, if you don't remove your pre-trib rapture doctrine, that's what he's saying. He's not, there's nothing else that fits. It's pre-trib rapture. Your pre-trib rapture understanding, so firmly on your face, covering your eyes, then know this is your choice, and you will reap reward upon yourself for this decision. Tell me another decision that could be. What's the rose-colored glasses? Rose-colored glasses means... We think something good is going to come, and no bad is going to come. That's straight out of a pre-trib rapture. I warn you now, my children. I'm about to remove forcibly these rose-colored glasses from your face. In other words, I'm about to show you forcibly that there's not going to be a pre-trib, or a mid-trib, or a pre-wrath rapture. Everybody gets tested. 
By the violence of reality, what happens on your world? You will find yourself in a state of shock. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to forcibly remove the rose-colored glasses, or I'll say it this way. I'm going to forcibly remove your misunderstanding of a pre-trib rapture from your face by the violence of reality of what happens on your world. In other words, I'm going to shake your tree. You will find yourself in a state of shock and of a compromised spirit as you then realize Antichrist's forces begin taking full control of your world, moving no longer in the darkness of the shadows because when you have allowed yourself to be deluded and then deceived, then you are not fully awake or prepared in me. You will miss my very soon coming return. Now, I gotta say something about that. And I will in just a second. This will occur if after my last attempts to wake you up by shock and force fail. Because you choose, even after what's fully coming fully arrives, has hit your world full force and you climb back into your easy chair with another pair of rose-colored glasses. Those who do so will do then out of fear and denial. Even after the judgments you will go through, all given out of love to try to wake you up, so you will return to me before it's too late for man. I strike your nation, daughter, blow by blow, and the last blow shall be war and invasion upon your nation's soil. War will break out in many places upon your world, as the attack upon your nation will cause a chain reaction of other outbreaks of war in various nations. Not far behind the strikes with the mass weapons of destruction or the nuclear bombs, which begins falling on your soil, the coming three days of darkness is intertwined in judgments, but it also is intertwined with the fall of Babylon, once known as America to me, but no more. Okay, let me explain what he's talking about. There's actually two times when America is judged. As you recall, Revelation 18 says, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. So there's two is fallen. The first is fallen is here. It's uh, the everlasting gospel is preached. Then Babylon fallen number one happens. And this is on or about the first four trumpets somewhere in there. This is just before we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, only those who get to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb are those that are ready, according to what the Bible says. Then, about four months later, we return on white horses with Jesus here. And then this is the second fall of Babylon. The first fall is upon the church because of sins in the church. And then, four months later, the second fallen is upon all of the rest of the people. And that, that includes everybody on the, on the planet. But this specific talking about Revelation uh, 18 is when Revelation 18, starting verse 2, starts happening here uh, when America is destroyed the second and final time. So the first time is on or about, well, as a matter of fact, uh, 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 Vicky says that as the bombs come down, we go up. And that fits with what I've had in this chart in my books for a long time. Okay, Babylon 1 is destroyed just as the bombs are falling, we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. But four months later, we return on white horses with him, and that's when he destroys Babylon or America the second time. All right, now, a little closer look at it is here. So just go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, and then back over here. So that's about four months later, and that lines out with everything I've been teaching, too. All right, let's go on. America the Beautiful is dead to me, except for my beautiful little children still living inside her as lights among the darkness. They have come out from the darkness, the evilness of your once great nation, living clean, godly lives with my help. The three days of darkness, judgment, and upon others are given in mercy, compassion, and tender love for those last few souls who shall finally come during such trying and such horrific times. This would be considered as some of those who had been pulled forcibly out of the fires and hell and damnation as written about in my book of Jude in your New Testament. Now, let me explain the three days of darkness. She talks about this several times. We're going to read this here again. But let me explain the three days of darkness. That happens here. So there's the, the voice said the seven seals play over seven years. The seven trumpets play over seven months. And the seven vials play over seven days. But on the fourth vial, sun gets seven times hotter. Isaiah 30 verse 26. That's when I believe all the skin of all the people on the earth all turns black from some kind of radiation released from the sun that has never been released, never hit the earth before. 
then the sun goes totally out and it never, ever, ever relights again. Then there's three days of darkness right here. And that's the three days of darkness that is just before America falls the second time. Now, there's apparently, there's two, from what I gather from the prophecies, there's two different kinds of three days of darkness. One is a darkness that you can feel. And another darkness is one that is because the sun's gone out. Okay, so there's two different kinds of darkness. I wish I had more answers for you there, but I don't. That's as good as I can do. And the three days of darkness and judgment upon others are given in the mercy, compassion, and tender love for those last few souls who shall finally come during such trying and horrific times. This would be considered as some of those who had pulled you forcibly out of the fires of hell and damnation, as written about in my book of Jude in your New Testament. I'm about to send the final blow upon your nation, O daughter of mine, but you do not have to fear these things coming. Fear is a tormenting spirit sent from your enemy, Satan. My children, who are fully awakened, rapture ready, as you call it, to me, little daughter, are those who know how to abide in me and I fully in them. They are those who have learned how they can have peace in the middle of chaos and destruction. And this is done by focusing and refocusing on me continually. My word tells you of my perfect peace that's available to all who hide in me. Take shelter in me. They're God and King. I know, little children, these can appear overwhelming at times, even frightening. This is why you must focus on me. And if, dear little children, you have found you are fearful and you have placed your eyes upon the destructive storm and off of me, I say, refocus on me. So he's given us all some suggestions on how to make it through this trouble. Be like Peter. My disciple of old, who did get out of the boat during the storm upon the sea and even walked upon the surface, but the winds increased, storm raged, and he took his eyes off of me and he became afraid. Yet little children, he knew to call upon me. Even after he took his eyes off me, he knew that I would hear him and rescue him because he knew how much I loved him. Peter had to refocus his eyes on mine back upon me. So trust me, little children, like Peter did when I walked him on the water back into the safety of the ship's protection. Never forget that even though Peter did betray me by denying me three times during the night of my soon coming crucifixion, he was the only one who had faith in me, faith enough and strength and power to get out of his ship and take his steps of faith upon the water's surface. This same Peter, my dear friend, who denied me, took his eyes off of me in the storm, is the very same person who was given the divine revelation that I am truly the son of the living God, Jehovah, and through his design, divine revelation, I built my church. So my dear little children, with all you know in your heart and spirit that's coming, if you've taken your eyes off of me, as some of you have, I say it's time to refocus. It's time to turn your attention and focus fully back on me and be the Peters of this world. I have called you to be. Peter is an example of how human failure can be turned for the better of that person and for the kingdom of God. So look at the skies and never doubt my return, because I shall not allow you, my children, to endure all these coming things foretold, but I shall be your escape. Again, not a pre trib rapture, but through holiness and prayer. Some by death beforehand. So he openly says, some of you will not go through it because you'll die. Some shall depart by me. I believe that that's when we get to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, about four months before he returns on the Feast of Trumpets while others shall be martyred for my great name. So if you're, if you're destined to be a martyr and you're continuing to look for a pre-trib rapture, do you see a problem? I do. This is the world you now find yourself in. Little daughter, the time is approaching for the three days of darkness. The use of the portal particle accelerators such as found at CERN's location in Switzerland as well as others across the world below and above its surface has caused a greater hole, a ripping in the outer stratosphere, as those still continually running, running not stop, put upon your atmosphere. It is allowing the sun's powerful rays to penetrate your atmosphere. This, your world's official governments and scientific communities will say is the cause, including global warning is a cause of my colorful display of lights in the skies. And they will be partially right, but know that it's only by your command that these colors are evident for your world to see. 
Evidence can already be seen across the skies of your world, but when it reaches the point of all eyes seeing the brilliant display of colors dancing in the skies for your world in such brilliance and glory, then it's time to run into the safety of your homes. For this is the warning sign I have given you, my children, that as in the days of Moses and Pharaoh, I am sending the three days of darkness, the outer darkness that's fully alive in ways that physical mind cannot comprehend across the earth. All will endure. The descent of darkness. The sun will not show his face again. So this is the three days of darkness when the sun goes out and it never lights again. The sun will not show his face again until the three days are fully completed in the time found within time. As a wheel within a wheel, stay ready, my children. Stay ready in me always. So the three days of darkness are right here. The sun gets seven times hotter here on the fourth vial. And it totally goes out on the 5th, 6th, and 7th. Each one of these are the three days. That's what he's talking about. A little closer. Sun gets seven times hotter here. And then for three days, actually starting right here, it goes out. And it never, ever, ever relights again. We are so excited to offer you our new product. At josephskitchen.com, go check out our new spreadable honeys. You and your family are going to love them. We have pumpkin, pecan, cinnamon, and original. It's great to put in your coffee or your tea on your brand new loaf of homemade, healthy whole wheat bread. Don't miss out on this holiday offer. Go to josephskitchen.com or call the number on your screen today. So Terry Saka of cornerstoneassetmetals.com, why should people call you today? Well, the COMEX, which is the exchange which runs the silver and gold price in America, has been found in silver to only have 35 million ounces left. That seems like a lot, but it is not. We are 200 million in the deficit for demand for industry. The time is now to start collecting your own physical supply before it gets a lot more expensive. So the supply is low, which means the price is going up. And right. we'll have to eventually with, be able to break this manipulation, no doubt. CornerstoneAssetMetals.com. Give them a call, start a dialogue, maybe open an account, and then let them help you decide what's best for you and your family. CornerstoneAssetMetals.com. Next is, I'll send you to EMPShield.com. If you use the promo word prophecy, you get a $50 discount. What is that? Well, it looks like this. This is the one that goes into a car, okay? And you put the red wire to the red side of the battery. You put the black wire to the black side of the battery. And the green one attaches to the body of the car. Then you peel it off right back here. Just peel that off. Stick it inside of the, 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 the engine compartment of your car. And the whole point is when the electricity goes off or when some kind of a suitcase nuclear, or nuclear device goes off, this is supposed to be able to stop that device from destroying every computer chip in your car. Because if every computer chip is destroyed in your car these days, you couldn't possibly replace them all. Throw the car away. So, empshield.com, promo code PROPHECY.